Hello, my name is Matt. Welcome to Unbearable 73. Uh, time to for Orville Season 3, Episode 2, Shadow Realms. Now, uh, as usual, this is one of my uh, heavy spoiler reviews. I will reserve some comments until the, the beginning of Episode 3 review, so I don't spoil the episode completely, but you kind of have to talk about them, and that's one of the reasons I kind of wait a day or two on the Orville uh, reviews. Uh, at, if you're watching it season three at this point, you, you don't need my reviews to tell you to watch it. Even though, if, you know, uh, you, I guess you're looking for my opinion, which I, I appreciate. So, following up to episode one. Now, I'll give you a little personal history uh, here. Um, I describe myself as being in remission from mental illness. Uh, there are probably other ways to phrase it, you know, but uh, it's, it's kind of like, I, I always thought of mental illness as mental cancer, so to speak, you know. Um, it never really goes away. I've been in treatment on it and counseling on and off over the past couple of decades. Uh, you know, I'm in a pretty stable place, but every so often I like to t check in with therapists, you know, which is something I was told way back at the beginning, uh, after I had gotten st stable and functional and all, that every, every, even if you, when we conclude this therapy eventually, you know, five, every five years or so or wherever you, or if you're feeling, pay attention to these signs, go back to a therapist, go to a few sessions and just get a mental checkup, so to speak, you know, especially if you have the insurance, obviously, you know, but there's plenty of resources for those who don't have it, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, you know, I was, um, I was, had severe depression, PTSD, anxiety, I had uh, some mood swings, but nothing um, like manic or anything like that. And I had, uh, you know, uh, suicidal ideation. Now, I'm not a mental health professional, so my perspective on this episode is based on who's had to deal with it personally and read a lot about it to, to understand my situation because knowledge helps you. Um, you know, a lot of times mental illness is something that affects your emotional emotions, and if you can learn to sort of focus on a rational process in conjunction with whatever external therapy helps you, um, you, can use, you can learn tools that will help you cope is the best way to put it. Uh, now, the only thing I can say, it, it's been a long time since I was I ha had suicidal ideation, is I still keep the suicide hotline number in my phone. Okay? Uh, I haven't used it in probably more than 20 years. And it's not just for that circumstance. It's to provide other reliefs from mental health issues, but it's primarily for that. Um, if you feel any such urges, call that hotline or your local emergency room or your physician uh, and, you know, get help. You, it's there. You don't have to take go to any extremes. Get help. Um, then another resource for you is the Na is NAMI, the National Alliance for Mental Illness. They have a national website as well as state chapters, which can also help you out with getting access to professional help and others. And don't and for those and also, you know, feel free to reach out to your, your if you're religiously inclined to your ministers and whatnot. Just get help. It's the important thing. Now, that's all leading to you know what I didn't talk about last episode. But basically, that Isaac was driven to suicide in episode one. Very touchy topic, uh, you know. Uh, and from someone who has been through, through the road, you know, if you want a, a good song to describe it, you know, uh, Metallica has two songs which always stick to me. One is my favorite song, Welcome Home. Uh, and another one is Fade to Black. Uh, you can go play those two songs and... Get a very good sense of, of the journey that a mentally ill person goes on, uh, especially in Fate to Black, where it leads to what Isaac did. You know, and you could see the buildup of pressure. And you might say, well, Isaac, he's a robot. He has no emotions or whatever. Though we learn later that Isaac has some sort of emotional subroutines deep in there. that I, I, They never clarify if they're just low level or, or, not, or suppressed or whatever, but they, they do exist in some capacity in there. Um, and... The episode showed the logical progression of all the abuse that was heaped on him. You know, you, you can see him reacting in a rational way to everything they were doing. And Isaac made the logical determination that it would have increased the efficiency of the crew if he deleted himself. Sounds pretty rational, right? But that's basically what a, a real person would do, but from a emotionally distraught point of view that it comes across. You know... You know, so I now obviously we know since it was almost fifteen minutes to go, I and, and we could know Isaac as a main character, he's not gonna stay dead. 
Um, though, well, not comments on Isaac as a main character in or on the plot of this episode coming up. Anyway. So the question is, now, so getting past the mental health aspects, okay? So the question is, could the Orville nail this episode completely? Did, did they did well depicting the emotional abuse, which expressed the, the emotional trauma the crew suffered, which I think I talked about last uh, episode review, okay? They showed Isaac reacting to this, dealing with the people who he had been close with, turning on him, uh, heaping their passing. One of, one of the things that affects mental people a lot is when people regular people sort of pass their emotional abuse on to others. And for regular people, that's kind of a primate bonding thing. You all sort of share in the group suffering and it kind of brings you together. But for a person who's mentally ill, it makes it worse. Okay. Um, one of the real skills I can advise you to develop if you know, if let's say you have a family member who is mentally ill, a close friend, learn not to bomb them with your problems. That doesn't mean you, you don't want to withdraw completely because you want to maintain the friendship because it helps them. But you want to, so, you know, learn to read, talk to them, say, look, you know, I, I have an issue I want to I will get your, appreciate your advice about, but I, I'm not looking to sort of, you know, pass on to, to hurt you by talking about this. And may, you know, lead into it. And, and if you have a, a person who's going to, like me, who's been through therapy or whatever, they'll say, look, man, I just can't deal with this right now. Or it's something that would trigger me or whatever, you know. A, a good friendship will be like that, you know. Um, and so anyway, getting on to this. So we got the we got the first two parts of this issue with what led to Isaac doing it um, and Isaac's actions in regard to that were good. I uh, mean, well done by the show. Okay, so the question is, could the Orville nail it? I mean, in the sense of bringing Isaac back, but not walking back the long term issues that were brought up that the people were suffering from. Could they do it? And so eventually, they had gone ninety five yards or facing the end zone and had two and basically had you know like third and third and long in the end zone. Okay. Not only, you know, third and mid, 95 yards, right? And could they drive that ball in for a touchdown? Or would they just kick a field goal? Or would they muff completely? Well, there was only one contrived moment in that whole end sequence, okay? Uh, that didn't fit. It just felt... Like, it, it just felt kind of pushed to, to cause an effect. In other words, it was a plot event to cause an effect, but didn't fit naturally in the flow of the event of the plot, right? It's when the Kalon ship attacked. I mean, it felt like it wasn't written to show that Kalon was still hunting people, humans and others. It was just shown to sort of accelerate the the actual end of the plot with led to Isaac coming back, okay? And the, so it was minor. That's why I didn't give the, the, the show a perfect 10. Um, but the actor who played Marcus Finn, B.J. Tanner, he picked that ball up, ran it for a touchdown, okay? So, boom, got it. You know, and they, they kept true to, to the new character, um... But Burke, they kept true to her, you know, reacting to what Tanner did, uh, uh, acted as an actor, what Marcus Finn, the character, did, and, and doing her duty, so to speak. And showing that she was still traumatized, but she kind of rash, could come to a terms with it and do what was ultimately the right thing, it was to bring Isaac back. So that's, that's the end of the commentary for, on the first episode. Uh, now we'll go on to the second episode. Only one production note to really note here. Um, I love the visuals in this episode. It's patently obvious that either consciously or unconsciously they're going for a Lovecraftian vibe. It harkens back. It also harkens back to Babylon and follow the visuals for some of the first ones, particularly Shadows and, of course, the Third Space Aliens. And the people who don't know who never watched Babylon 5 um, or did but might not know this, the Third Space Aliens, as directly stated by JMS, and, and you're supposed to get this, that when they broke into that space, those are Lovecraftian entities. Like, like Cthulhu is somewhere in that space, so to speak. You know, and these are his servants that he has they've been twisted to madness by him and so forth already, okay? So this is a lot, you know. Anyway, uh, I might have a little more on that in the in the spoiler section uh, next episode. So on the plot. So, uh, again, I have to go into the Lovecraftian themes in the episode. Um, it needs to be, so I'll give you, give you an understanding of how, what, uh, about Lovecraft, so talk about, we're going to talk about Lovecraft's work, okay? So we need to understand that Lovecraft's own work, in what came to be called the mythos, his work is science fiction horror, okay? The entities in question are all aliens or beings from other dimensions and so forth, things you would read about in sci-fi. Right? The supernatural in Lovecraft is understood to be humanity's attempt due to humanity's 
our inability to comprehend these entities or to interpret them or access them uh, in a science way, meaning uh, like a, in an engineering point of view to, to, to build an engine, to draw upon the energy or whatever, you know. Um, basically, they interpret them as supernatural and perform rituals and whatnot to uh, like uh, come to an understanding, to interpret them, to, to use the powers those entities grant, but not in a but in a sort of worship, as if they're worshiping gods and so forth. So the entities see this and say, ah, I got suckers, and gives them some sort of powers in return for the, these entities, which are at best neutral to humanity, but are often innately inimical, meaning it's not that the entity wants to harm you, per se, but that you're like, uh, uh, you know, as most of the entities, even the ones that don't want to harm you specifically, they use humanity like like we might use lab rats or cows or well grown house plants, you know, or farm plants. Okay, so the Krill's religious interpretation of the entities fits right in with a Lovecraftian vibe. And if you remember in Babylon Five, the Narn's interpretation of the shadows and the Shadow War, when you first get exposed to it, uh, the Shadow War was a thousand years earlier. It's from the uh, uh, the, the uh, Jaquan's book of religious and philosophical texts. And 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 the, and the shadows described in, in the sense of um, ancient monstrous supernatural beings, right? So another facet of the crafting horror is that some humans do not demonstrate proper fear or caution when dealing with these entities of forces, and that's Admiral Christie. Uh, his approach to the unknown. Once we understood that we were dealing with a Lovecraftian situation, meaning us, the audience, it pretty much meant that Christie was do- Christie was doomed to be some sort of victim. Now, for those wondering about the outcome of the episode, the Lovecraftian theme story. If the heroes win, there are always consequences involving loss. That's all I can say at that for now. On the longer-term issues, I bet this new enemy is in place to keep the Krill and the Union a permanent alliance while having to use the Kalon all the time. Um, the Kalon will work best as a periodic villain, and maybe you have another Kalon war a few seasons down the line. That sort of kind of settles the issue for a like, long time. Um, an- again, uh, uh, so move on to our next issue here. Um, because again, I don't. I will talk split. I don't want to blow the whole episode, you know, out of the water. Um, the humorous episode in this episode. So we'll move on to our last. Uh, another, again, move on. The humorous episode is very well timed. It's very tonally appropriate. Example in one case, which occurred in the bridge. I want to say it will say where it occurred. There, so you can see it. It perfectly lightened the tone of the episode to the audience. Meaning, we saw the humor so to speak, but it was a joke sequence, a joke sequence meant for us, the audience, not so much for the crew per se, you know. And uh, in another part of the plot, it was used to lighten the mood of the crew. Okay? And again, well used humor, yeah, we got a funny joke out of the audience, but the crew was in a very dark place, and it, instead of going completely going dark, they leveled out with a little bit of humor, take the pressure off, and then it can go down and dark again, you know. Um, the rest of what I said I have to reserve for the spoiler section in the next view, so to speak. So, my final thoughts. Um, I'm ranking this one a 7 out of 10. There was one particular element that I can't talk about without full spoilers, but that responsible for knocking it down two full points. Okay? Um, comment down below if you have any questions for me about this video. Please share your thoughts. Share this video if you enjoyed it. Like if you like. Dislike if you dislike. Subscribe if you want to hear more from me. My name is Matt. This has been Unbearable 73. Have a nice day, and I am out of here.